Now first up before we, or before I go into what's going to happen in today's clip, one of the subs asked me about a um, Airhawk seat for one of these uh, scooters. So this is an Airhawk 2 and I thought I'd just bring it out, sit it on the bike and you can see it sits there quite well. I haven't actually tested them, like I bought this, uh, I don't know, three or four years back for one of those hard riding bikes I had. All I've got to do is find now is some straps or something to put down the side where I flip it on and I might take it out and give it a bit of a trial run and uh, we'll just see how it goes. You know, take it out, run at 100 kilometres, see what it rides like out with the um, Airhawk on and on the way back with it off or, you know, vice versa, just depends on what happens. So, quick, just a quick summary on what's going to happen today. So first off we're going to uh, have a look inside the storage area under the seats on both bikes so we'll check out what's on the Forza 350 and we'll swing over there and have a look at what's going on in that direction in the uh, X-Max 300. After that I might just show you the procedure to start either bike and then when we get on to uh, you know like one's got one more step to do it I think than the other one then after that's out of the way I'll do a um, virtually a startup test on both bikes and we'll just see what it's like or what I think it's like for vibration in handlebars on both bikes or overall opinion on how the bike runs from scratch from a cold start. And then to finally uh, call it quits on this one on this series pole part three. What we'll do then we'll remove the covers off the Forza in the handlebar section, covers off here on the X-Max. I'll give you a look underneath why um, the X-Max is sort of more like a motorcycle by when I rip the covers off and you'll see how it is. And over here where you look at the uh, Forza, why well, it looks more like a scooter. So we'll get into it now and uh, we'll, I'll just go and get, uh, I think a good way to kick off this test would be to lift up the seat on both and then we'll see how a uh, two full face helmets, you know, I've got two in there, one motocross type one another and we'll rip those helmets in there and see if both of them fit in there okay and if there's any storage left so uh, just go and grab the helmets. So we'll go into the Honda first now I've got Bob for both bikes in pocket you know left and right and we come over here to get access to the Honda what you do is just go to the central panel turn it one click you see the display all blue that'll give you access to the fuel there it is there straight into that one I will just put that down and then if I come up here and press the button the seat, seat clicks up and there we have the under storage space and there you are looking down into that one there so that's the Honda out of the way. We'll head over to the X-Max now and just see the access here so if I want to come over here we go to the centre of the console again, press it once, swing to the right, there's your fuel one go up and that's access to your fuel tank. Pretty simple. We'll just take it back to normal. So say for example I want to get into the boot or should I say under the storage area. We just get here, press it, swing it over to there, press seat and here's our big under seat storage space in the uh, Yamaha Hex 300. So first off the impressions are when you look here and we swing back to the Honda. They both look pretty huge, but I think the Yamaha has got it over it. And once again, looking into the Yamaha, and I'm gonna put two helmets in there. Now while you're at it, the Yamaha has got this where the Honda hasn't. See, we've got a nice LED light here at the side, so if you're out at night time, that'd come in handy if you want to do that. I'll just show you another little nifty thing here with the Yamaha. It's got the nice lock and glove box. Just press the button. Which she goes down into there and you've also got a cigarette lighter adapter back in there I don't know if you can see it or not so that's more like a 12 volt accessory plug where well, you've got one in the Honda but I think it's more like a USB notice how nicely that closes so we'll undo the lid again now listen look at that really good Okay, so while we're at it, we might just have a look at, while we're up the front end of here, we'll just have a look at this storage compartment. The Yamaha in its front there has got two, and if you look here, as I shine into it, one on the left, which is lockable, which I just unswitched, it's even got a 12 volt plug there at the back there, you know, so if you want to plug in anything, 12 volt. And then, if you look over on the right hand side, this one's not lockable, you can just come near it any time. If you press that open, like so. 
there it is again. So although the Yamaha has got two, I reckon the Honda beats it, and here's why. So let's go ahead and have a look at the Honda storage one. So we come in here like that, give it a press, flips undone. Now if you look at this, into there like that, it's got a huge one. It's got a 12, it's got a little USB plug up the top here, like so. But when you look down into it, now look at this. I can put my hand inside here, and it holds, look at that. It will hold one large can of chunky beef and vegetable soup from Campbell's. Now that's pretty good, isn't it? So when you look like that, if you come over to the uh, X-Max, try to do the same thing. See, just won't fit in. So if you buy one of these bikes and you're thinking of carrying cans of soup, forget about the X-Max because there's no doubt the Honda's got the best capacity to carry a, look at the depth. A huge one. Okay guys, let's jump into the helmet test. So I've got, like I said, one big motocross one on here. My normal one I usually ride around in on that one. So if you look at it now, we haven't got a huge amount of room left. We've got a little bit up here in the center, central section. And you could probably pack a few soft things around that one. So we'll do, go for a close. This is a little bit tight on this one, but it does close. So there you can see it like that. Okay guys, we've got the two crash helmets under here. I'll just get here, turn her on, like so, press seat, pressed, up it comes, both crash helmets, all good there. Okay, we've got both same helmets into the X-Max now, you can see there's a, still a fair bit of room left in there, like so. We'll do a close. There she is closed, locked in, so we can come back around here now, get back here, switch it to open, press seat, up it comes, there you are, all good. So both bikes will carry, or both scooters I should say, I'll carry uh, two full face helmets and that um, front one there, what I use on the uh, off-road bike. It's a lot bigger than what I suppose a normal one would be, so it's taken up a bit more room. So overall, you've got a rough idea now that uh, both of them will have no trouble carrying a full face helmet. And more importantly, I'd say the X-Max here just have a little bit more room inside. So we'll class that test now as completed and you've got a good idea what's in both. If we look at the security side, I get it on the uh, Auto 350, turn it on. I'm just about ready to take off and change my mind. I turn it off. I walk away. And there it set the alarm or the immobilizer or whatever's going on that way. And that's sort of in a virtually, I suppose, a steel proof mode at the moment. So if we, example, now we swing over to the X-Max. I've got that one and I, so if I just, so if I just leave my right hand glove box unlocked and uh, figure it about and I just go away for a section, it should start beeping after I head off. There she goes now. So that's letting me know I haven't secured the bike properly. So I've got to come back, close the lid, it's quietened down, I can just put that back on on the lock section there anyway. So both of them are fairly uh, interesting in that line and they've got a few safety or theft proof features and that'll get you out of trouble. Okay guys, next up we'll do a cold start from scratch. These bikes haven't been run or been out in the road running. So to do the Honda, you come over here, you will turn it clockwise till the display flashes finger on the um, brake there and then you're ready to hit the uh, starter now what I have found is on idle the Honda's a lot rougher you can see the vibration running through it so you can just tell by the mirror uh, the uh, front screen here 
it's got a lot of shake in the Honda. But the strange thing about the Honda is, you would expect it to be a lot vibier when you get it going and cruising out on the road. Not the case. It's a bit rough here on idle till it warms up, but once you get out on the road, it's a fairly smooth bike to ride. So there it is, that's a Honda out of the way. Now we'll get to the Yamaha, which I think is a little bit more involved to start. Compared to the Honda, you press it once, that's part one, turn it over for two, breaker three, and the starter here, four. But already you can see nowhere near the amount of vibration coming along the handlebars. At the moment on this one, it's a lot smoother bike. But the thing is it may be smoother, but when you're actually riding it, I think the Yamaha's got a little bit more vibe running along the bars, only slight, but it's got more vibe in the bars compared to what the other one's got. But you can see from scratch, the, the X-Max 300 is a very smooth idler. I might be able to kick the Honda over too. Okay guys, both bikes idling. And you can still see the Honda has been idling now from that little start before. Still shaking a bit. See the screen? Mirrors you can feel shaking. Should be able to see my hand shaking there. You should be able to get a better idea of the vibration now on that um, front screen. But like I said, the um, Honda may vibrate a bit more on idle, but once you get it going, I think it's a smoother bike to ride. So uh, we'll just turn this one off. Swing back over here to the uh, X Max. Yeah, it's a different sort of frequency. I think it all depends, like over the years I've been, know a lot about these bikes that vibrate, and I think it all depends on what frequency, how it works that way, how it affects it. But the Yamaha is a nice smooth motor from the start. Is it a better motor? I don't know, time would tell, but at this stage, that's the difference between the two motors. So I don't know if anyone's ever done that test before, but if not, you saw it here first. I think that'll do that one uh, as far as this clip goes. There should be enough material on here to keep you uh, interested in having a look. I think next time out in, uh, on part four, then we'll go into the uh, handlebars and pull those out and we'll have a look at the steering on both because that's more involved. So we'll catch up with you on the next clip and thanks for watching.